For decades now, tech nations worldwide have relied heavily on the capture capability of none other than a digital storage oscilloscope, or lab scope as commonly known amongst technicians in the automotive industry. But regardless of how powerful this device can be, if you don't have it set up for success, you're in for a world of hurt. Want to know more? Join me on this episode of The Trainer and find out. Many will consider the digital storage oscilloscope or lab scope the tool to have regarding capture capability in the world of automotive diagnostics. The ability to leverage multiple channels for sample means we can look at more than one circuit at the same time. That gives us an excellent opportunity for comparative measure, meaning inputs versus outputs, or multiple outputs compared to one another. The ability of the digital storage oscilloscope to capture digitally means a history of what's being captured is stored internally in its buffer, whether that buffer is stored internally to the device or on the hard drive of the PC it's tethered to. Regardless, the digital storage oscilloscope's swift capture capability allows for an almost real-life capture of what's happening on the circuits we are sampling from. But as mentioned earlier, if we don't have the digital storage oscilloscope set up for success, it's going to leave us high and dry. Regardless of which manufacturer's lab scope you choose to use, each and every single one of them indeed have limitations, and it's simply due to how they are designed to capture and store data. And one of the biggest selling points for lab scopes is what's known as sample rate. Each and every one of these devices on all of the channels it samples from has a limitation known as sample rate. As it sounds, sample rate is the ability to take samples or pictures of the circuits that are being measured. The point is, regardless of what sample rate the scope boasts, the samples are split among how many channels are being leveraged and how much time data is being monitored over. A easier way of looking at this is almost like having this bag of candy here. The amount of pieces stored inside this bag of candy is limited. And regardless of how many friends you choose to share this candy with, the more friends you share it with, the less candy goes to each one of those friends. Leveraging the power of the lab scope allows us to make almost real-time captures stored in a buffer over time. However, the limitation being sample rate means if we have insufficient sample rate for the sample being captured, it will not draw an accurate graphical representation of what's happening in the circuit. Take a look at this picture right here. This digital square wave is a common signal seen among many automotive manufacturers' platforms for multiple reasons. With this example of a 20 hertz sample rate, we are able to accurately capture the digital square wave. Cutting that sample rate in half down to 10 hertz or 10 samples per second does not allow enough samples to accurately represent the sample being acquired on the scope. Cutting that sample rate in half again severely limits the scope's capability and does not provide for an accurate representation of what's truly happening in the circuit. Choosing the right sample rate means matching the samples for the speed of the signal being acquired. What's the benefit of matching sample rate for the speed of the signal? It's buffer size, the amount of data that can be stored. Having a very high sample rate limits the amount of time you can put on the scope screen because the amount of samples acquired takes up space in the scope's buffer. And if we fill the scope's buffer with an extremely high sample rate, that limits the amount of capture time we have. On the flip side, with insufficient sample rate, we could certainly fill the scope's buffer with a significantly long amount of time. However, the insufficient sample rate or time between sample points being insufficient means we could miss 
important changes in voltage, like we see here in this capture. Matching the scope's sample rate with the speed the signal being acquired is extremely important. Doing so properly means we can optimize the scope's capture capability, giving us the required amount of sample points, but still allowing us to acquire a lot of data over a period of time. But don't take my word for it. Take a look at this camshaft position sensor signal captured on this PC-based lab scope. Currently, we're sampling at a rate of one million samples per second, which is more than sufficient for the speed of this incoming signal. The upside is we capture a beautiful picture, more than enough samples than necessary, but the downside is, due to the fact that the sample rate is so high, we've limited the amount of data we can capture in the buffer. Meaning, if we were trying to capture an intermittent glitch, perhaps on a road test, it might not be stored in the buffer when we get back to the shop. Lowering the sample rate will allow us to extend the size of the buffer, meaning the chances of missing a glitch are significantly less. However, lowering the sample point too low will damage the signal and cause it to appear erroneously, meaning the sample being captured is not as fast as the signal coming in, and the scope draws a picture that appears to be what we call aliased. It's not an accurate representation of what's truly being measured. Capturing at a rate 10 times the speed of the signal coming in will ensure that your capture is optimized, meaning we have adequate sample rate to display the incoming signal and sufficient size in the buffer to store data over time. I'm Brandon Stackler, Technical Editor of Motor Age Magazine, and thank you for joining me on this episode of The Trainer.